We've been working from home for a little over a year now. This is all fake, it's green screen. My actual room looks like because of the amount of products that I have stored here. So during this period, I haven't had access to our office PC to edit these videos on. But that got me thinking, can I produce the same kind of content with the same quality and efficiency at home using a mid-ranged laptop. This is the Product Nation content creator stress test with the mid-ranged Dell Inspiron 15. If you're thinking about creating content yourself, whether you're an individual who wants to become a YouTuber or you're a small to medium business like us who wants to create videos, you probably think that you need a more expensive PC or laptop to make pretty good quality videos or professional looking videos. But that's not always true. That's kind of what we're hoping to show you in this video. If the Dell Inspiron can handle this, it could be a great alternative for those looking for content creation on a tighter budget. Now, every single video we put out on this channel goes through three pretty heavy softwares. We use the Adobe Suite, so we've got Adobe Premiere Pro, Adobe After Effects, and Adobe Photoshop. So to keep true to that, we're gonna be testing out those three softwares to create a bunch of videos using the Inspiron laptop, including this video that you're watching right now. So here's our usual workflow. Once the scripting and everything is over, I shoot the video on the camera like I'm doing right now, and then I transfer over the footage using the SD card to the PC or laptop. The Dell Inspiron comes with its very own SD card slot, which even some content creator laptops don't come with anymore. After I've sorted out the footage, I open up Adobe Premiere Pro. After that, it's pretty much a matter of chopping up the videos to fit the timeline and give us a baseline story. The processor on here is the 11th gen i5 processor with eight gigs of RAM, not even 16 gigs, and despite that, it handled the editing process pretty smoothly. It gave me no issues while editing, creating multiple layers, graphical overlays, and even color editing. I had no lag issues whatsoever with 1080p footage. With the 4K footage, however, there was a bit of lag, a bit of choppiness, which is kind of expected even with the higher end ones. Uh, so if you tone down the resolution of playback, uh, you can edit pretty easily. Once the baseline edit is done and I'm happy with how that's looking, it's time to bring in the big guns and take it over to Adobe After Effects. This is where I usually do the green screen keying out or 3D tracking if we have that in videos or some text animations that we can't do in Premiere Pro. I generally don't even use After Effects standalone. I use Premiere Pro to dynamic link the composition to After Effects. So that linking alone can take a fair bit of CPU power and the Inspiron handled that surprisingly well. Now within After Effects, if you use a lower resolution to edit, you can edit a lot quicker with less choppiness and we kind of saw the same thing here. But even on full resolution playback was pretty comfortable. So again, if you're doing basic After Effects work, I'm not talking about VFX and crazy stuff, basic After Effects work, you should get away with that pretty easily on here. It handles that really smoothly. If you have any issues though, you can always tone down the resolution while you're editing and then export in high res. So once I'm done with the After Effects side of things, thanks to Dynamic Link back in Premiere Pro, all our settings are transferred over and it's time to export the final video. The export time on this is pretty standard, nothing too impressive. Of course, this is where you begin to see a difference between the higher end PCs and laptops and something like a mid-range laptop. But that's not to say that this is awfully slow. Exporting our typical Product Nation video length, which is between five minutes to eight minutes, on this took about 25 to 40 minutes, which is fairly standard, depending obviously on the complexity of the project. And lastly, when we're done with the whole video side of things, the exporting, all of that, it's time to move on to my favorite application, which is Adobe Photoshop. This is where we design the thumbnails or edit our pictures that we post up on Instagram later. And Photoshop on this ran the smoothest out of all the three applications. To be honest, to edit the thumbnails, I pretty much felt no difference between our PC back at the office, a higher-end laptop, and this. It was pretty much almost exactly the same, but obviously that changes with the complexity of your Photoshop file. If you're doing something like digital art that involves a fair bit of layers, or you're doing some photo manipulation that involves a lot of layers as well, then obviously you would see a slowdown in the performance. But for our day-to-day -day work and for any typical content creation thumbnail design, Photoshop ran absolutely perfectly. So that's about it. Those are the three softwares that we use day to day. I'd say that was a pretty successful outcome for a mid-ranged laptop. That being said, I do recommend this for anyone getting into content creation. You don't really need a crazy expensive laptop or PC to create content like ours, which 
I would say it looks pretty good. So yeah, I mean, if you're happy with what you're seeing right now, then you would be happy with the Dell Inspiron series. We really hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, a like would be appreciated. Consider subscribing for more content like this, and we'll see you again in the next video.